would you believe that I filmed this footage of myself on my own? Nobody else involved. One camera, not a drone. Well, let me show you how I did it. Spoiler alert, this shot actually takes a lot of work. Posted a couple videos showing how I film myself skiing, trying to make it look like somebody else is filming me. All of those techniques involve me using a 360 camera attached to a four foot invisible selfie stick attached to me somehow, to my helmet, to my ski pole, or me simply holding it in my hand. With each of those techniques, the camera is always four feet away from me, following me wherever I go. I can never get a shot where I'm coming up to the camera and passing it because the camera's always with me. So how do you get that type of shot? It's not magic. You simply plant the camera somewhere, press record, walk back up the mountain, ski towards and pass the camera, stop, go back and get the camera, and then you got your shot. Dude, why not just have a friend stand there and film you? Well, the premise here is that you're by yourself. So if you want this type of shot, this is a way to get it done. And if a friend is filming you, there's a risk that they may pan out or zoom in at the wrong time, miss a shot altogether. With the 360 camera, you don't have to worry about that. So it actually has an advantage. And if you upgrade from a four foot selfie stick to a 12 foot extension rod like this, you can get the camera into places where a person filming you cannot get. Insta360 makes these longer extension rods and GoPro may too, but you can simply go to Amazon and buy one from a different manufacturer for a lot less money. And in my experience, those ones are perfectly fine. And let me walk you through how to set up for this shot. So I'm in Valle Nevado, Chile, and this will not be as extreme a shot as what I started with. The reason is I scout out some spots, but right now they're having issues with some of the pomelists that take me to those spots. So I'm just settling for this, but it will at least show you how much effort goes into this so you can decide whether or not it's worth it to you. But what I'm doing right now is extending the, ex the extension rod all the way, gonna plant it here on the side of the slope. I've got it recording. Let me get it in there. All right. And I'll angle it down a little bit so that I can kind of come close to underneath it. But because this is kind of a tame slope. It's not going to be as dramatic. I'm not going to look like I'm coming directly under the, the camera. So now comes the hard part or the labor intensive part, which is to walk back up the slope. So I got sick while I was here. Shout out to Ragu and his family who came down to Argentina and Chile to ski. Saw some of my videos and wanted to link up. But we weren't able to because I was sick, so maybe some point in the future. And the fact that I was sick makes this walk even tougher. All right, I'll probably speed this up so that you guys don't have to suffer through me walking up. All right, so the next step is to catch your breath because you're probably going to be doing this in a location that's going to make for a great shot. So you don't still want to be winded when you start to ski your board for the shot. I actually have recovered my breath. And, well, I didn't turn right in front of the camera, but I'm gonna stop here. I could have gone further, but it's gonna be a long walk back up. To make things easy, I'm gonna leave my skis here so I don't have to carry them on the walk back up to the camera. Hopefully that gives you an idea of how to set up the camera. If you're in a more extreme environment, you can find ways to sometimes suspend it over where you're skiing so you're directly under. Let's give it one more try. I found another spot. At least it's not a groomed slope, but it's also not that great either. It's kind of crusty snow that's been thawing out and freezing over day and night for a while. But hey, it'll be a second shot. So I'm setting up the camera here, pressing record. And I'm gonna try and angle it a little bit so that I can try to come a little bit underneath the camera. Probably not gonna work that well because you'd rather have a higher position for the camera for the selfie stick to be planted into or for the extension rod to be planted into. But beggars can't be choosers. Now comes the tough part with me walking back up to start the shot. It is a day later. I'm one more day past the flu I had, but all to show you guys how to get the shot. 
And y'all may watch and say, yeah, that's not worth it. <laughs> Obviously, if you're in a powder environment, the walk up is gonna be difficult. So you have to be smart about where you choose the location and what the conditions are. Here we go. Unfortunately, there was an error in the camera that I was using to take the shot. So I can't actually show you the footage. But what I can do is at least show you the way it went down from the camera I was using to show how I set everything up. This is always a problem when you're filming. You get everything right, but what happens is there's a malfunction with the camera or you forget to press record. All right, that was horrible. Not enough speed. My skis got caught in this hard, crusty snow, but it's not about that. It's really about trying to walk through the process to show you how to set up this shot so you can decide whether it has any potential for what you want to do. Once you finish filming, the next step is to edit the footage in the app. And this is where this technique may actually be better than somebody else filming you. That's because the app lets you choose precisely when you zoom in or pan out or turn the camera. If somebody else has filmed you, that's already set and you can't change it. So let's take a look at the footage here. So one way to make it look like somebody else is filming you is that you zoom in at the very beginning of the clip. So you can do that in the app by selecting what's called the narrow frame that will zoom in as much as possible. And then you let the clip play a bit. And as you approach the camera, you can stop it. And let's switch to wide angle here. That's the equivalent of panning out. Let the clip play some more. And as you pull away from the camera, you zoom in again. That makes it look like somebody is actively panning and zooming as they're filming you when you pass them. And what's pretty cool is nobody filmed you. You filmed yourself. Clearly, if you have somebody else who can take the shot, do it because that's a lot easier. Don't let go.